Elise Pickett here with The Urban Harvest, and today I am going to be talking to you about keeping chickens for modern homesteading. Keeping chickens, um, especially of late when there is so much interest in homesteading and self-sufficiency, um, is something that's a wonderful thing to consider. Um, but I'm going to start this talk by saying not to take it too lightly. Um, I've had chickens, um, oh, it's probably been on and off for seven, seven years or so, maybe a little longer. And um, I haven't had a flock since we did our travels in South America and came back, so I'm quite excited to get my little girls back. Uh, so I just started a flock, a uh, new backyard chicken flock, and I wanted to share some of the different concepts um, that you need to be aware of before you go to get your baby chicks. And one of those is to not take it lightly, especially around Easter. There's so many people who just go and buy chicks and don't have an end planned or don't intend on keeping them or aren't prepared to take care of them. Um, this is just like a cat or a dog or any other animal. They're depending on you for um, their care and upkeep. So definitely consider that before you go out and purchase your girls. Before going to the farm store or ordering online, um, it, take the time to do a little bit of research on which backyard chickens you'd like to get. They all have very different personalities and temperaments. Some are better at foraging than others, but if you're not gonna let them out of the coop, then that might not be a big factor for you. Some are more heat tolerant, cold tolerant, um, and the egg production can vary drastically. When you get into some of the more um, boutique -y backyard chickens, um, you can actually have um, egg laying hens that only lay one to two eggs a week, um, which is not much. So if you're looking for egg production, you might want to consider that. There are some that will lay up to five or six eggs a week when they're young. Uh, so definitely look at the egg production. There are ones that are considered what is called dual purpose for meat and eggs, and there are ones that are bred just for meat. Um, so taking the time to um, learn all of the differences and figure out which breeds fit best for you is a very important factor when you're considering keeping chickens uh, in the city. Another thing to consider before going to the store is how many you want in your flock. And it may seem like an easy enough decision, uh, but you can never have just one chicken. Bare minimum, you need to have two. They are very social creatures. Um, and if they don't have another hen or pullet to socialize with, you will become their family. Uh, so definitely have two or more. And you also need to check your local city ordinances. Every city, town, county is different. Um, so consider that as well when you're considering the maximum number that you can have. Um, another factor to consider is whether you get chicks, pullets, or hens. When keeping chickens, uh, a lot of us are usually going for egg production not always, um, but you don't get eggs from a baby chick for four to six months, depending on the breed. So if you aren't comfortable with that kind of wait time, you may be interested in pullets. That is when it is a fully feathered um, young hen that has not started laying yet. Um, there's a lot of pros and cons to each um, life stage or each phase of the hen's life. Um, when you get them as chicks, they socialize and attach to you a lot more than if you were to get a mature hen or even a pullet. Um, so if you're looking for a family pet or some sort of interaction, um, that's definitely a bonus to having chicks. They're also considerably cheaper than the pullets and mature hens. If you're looking for less maintenance, chicks do require a lot of extra steps and care in the beginning. If you wanna kinda of skip over that phase and go for lower maintenance, a pullet might be right for you. They're gonna be mid-range in the pricing scheme of things, um, and you don't have to wait quite as long until they're laying. Um, maybe a month, 
to two months, sometimes three months, depending on the breed, before they're going to be laying for you as opposed to four to six months. Um, they are a little bit lower in the selection, so if you're looking at some of the specialty breeds, you may not have as good of a selection at the pullet stage. Um, and certainly not so for mature laying hens. Mature laying hens are usually quite pricey um, just because you have the immediate um, gratification of eggs and you haven't gone through the feed and all of the care up to that point. Um, but with that, they usually don't socialize quite as well um, with you or your family. So just kind of weigh out the differences and what you are looking for and the amount of effort that you're willing to put into raising or keeping chickens. So this little girl is about two weeks old now. I got her as a day old chick and uh, she is still certainly considered a chick. She is not fully feathered. She still has a lot of that downy feather going on. Um, she's just starting to get the true feathers in on her wings and her tail feathers. Um, so at this stage, they still need a lot of care and a lot of upkeep. Um, and they're definitely um, a lot more vocal as you can see. This little girl here is about three to four weeks. She's in the process of moving from the chick phase into the pullet phase. Um, as you can see, most of her downy feathers are gone now. She's mostly feathered, um, but at this point, she still will need a little bit of heat from the heat lamps um, as she is not all the way feathered just yet. This little girl is about four to five weeks old. Um, as you can see, she's got much more of her feathers in. She's much larger in size. Her comb is starting to come in on the top of her head. And uh, as she's about to show us, I believe, she is close to capable um, as far as flying is concerned. This is definitely the age uh, where you will have to have a cover on your brooder to make sure that they don't um, hop up on the edge or wander the house when you're not wanting them to. There are three things to consider when keeping chickens prior to the pullet stage that you should have in place prior to even getting your baby chicks. One of which is the brooder. The brooder is basically their temporary home until they're fully feathered and capable of being outdoors in a coop. Now the brooder, especially if you're getting day old chicks, can be as simple as a cardboard box. We repurposed a storage tote uh, as a temporary brooder, but there are people who will use little kids swimming pools or anything else that's laying around the house. Uh, just remember, they're only going to be using this three, maybe four weeks at most, so really don't go overboard on this part. Spend that time and effort on the coop design so that it is well built and well designed for them down the road and not just for this temporary portion. The second thing to have in place prior to getting your chicks is a warmer or a heat lamp. Um, Chicks are not capable of maintaining their own body temperature uh, when they're young. In their first week of life, they need a consistent 95 degrees, um, and then it goes down five degrees a week from there. So at two weeks old, they'll probably be closer to 90, three weeks old, 85, and so on and so forth. You basically either have a brooder box that's large enough for them to regulate where they would like that temperature, or you can slowly move the heat lamp further and further away from the brooder box um, to maintain that temperature for them if it's a little bit smaller. You will continue lowering that temperature until it either reaches the ambient temperature of your home or outdoors, or until they are fully feathered and capable of regulating their own body temperature. The third thing to have in place for your chicks when you bring them home is their food, water, and bedding. The water is absolutely critical. If they don't have access to fresh, clean water, um, it can cause uh, significant issues within the flock and could pot potentially result in death. So make sure to change your water frequently. Make sure that it is clean. 
Uh, as you will find out once you get your chicks home, they love to scratch, pet, uh, mess, poo, and everything else. So sometimes you'll see really large water containers. I don't recommend them, especially for this stage when they're in the brooder box because it can allow you to go too long in between cleaning out their water container um, and their water may become dirty or um, not safe for them to drink. So definitely keep that in mind. As far as food is concerned, um, anything prior to a laying hen, so whether it be a chick or a pullet, you need to be using starter feed. Starter feed is lower in calcium uh, than the laying feed. And too much calcium when they are not laying eggs can cause a blockage and actually result in death. So until every single bird in your flock is laying eggs, do not switch over to layer feed. Only use starter feed. There are lots of different options when considering their food, medicated, non-medicated, um, whole grain, crumbles, pellets, the list goes on. I will do a video that goes in depth on all of the different pros and cons and differences between those feed options in another video, so stay tuned for that. I prefer to use pine shavings. I feel like it absorbs the odors really well. Um, and any excess moisture from the pee or the poo. Some people will use uh, sand instead. I would highly recommend the pine shavings. Plus, all of this gets added to your compost pile, so it's not like they go to waste or get tossed out. Considering modern homesteading options, keeping chickens or backyard chickens is a really fun topic to delve into. Um, they can add not only joy and entertainment around the house, um, but they also increase production drastically. So a lot of people immediately think eggs, of course, when you have laying hens. But they also do a lot of other services around your homestead, um, like adding to your compost pile, helping scratch up and turn over old garden beds, um, they also keep down pest pressure, so you can let them pick through compost piles or orchards to remove some of the pests that would be there. Um, so there's a lot of different services that pullets and um, laying hens can serve on the farm or homestead. Keeping chickens can be a really rewarding and fun part of modern homesteading. Um, I absolutely love having a flock of girls peeping, chirping, and um, scratching away in the backyard and in the house. Um, but take this time um, while they're this young to form a relationship with them if that's what you choose to do so. And you can use that time uh, to build out your coop. I will be having Florida specific uh, coop concepts coming to you in a video soon. Um, but until then, there are a ton of online resources and different ideas for improving airflow and lots of other concepts associated with chicken coop design for Florida. If you found this video helpful or um, interesting as far as modern homesteading is concerned um, and keeping chickens, make sure to leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear. And while you're down there, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you're alerted every time a new video comes out on Florida-based vegetable gardening and modern homesteading.